Hi, I'm Steve Bentz. Um, I'm a 35-year Nike veteran and I work in global transition management. But today we're going to talk about track and field, uh, the Olympic trials in Eugene, and Kerry Dimoff. So Kerry, I, I ran track at the University of Oregon uh, in the early 70s. You know, Steve Prefontaine was my teammate and Bill Bowerman was our coach. He was just retiring about the time I started. I've heard of those guys. Probably my proudest moment. Uh, when I ran down there was running in the Olympic trials in 1972. Mm -hmm. Well now it's 40 years later and we have our fellow uh, employee, Carrie, who's running not for one first time but for possibly her second time. Trying to qualify for my second time around, yeah. In the trials. So where does that stand right now? As of right now, I'm number 22. They'll take 24 of the top fastest women in the country. So it looks pretty good. Could you talk about 2008? What was that experience like? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, just like you were saying, it's incredible to run in the trials, and um, Nike does such a great job with the sponsorship. And de being down in Eugene, having all the Nike family cheering me on was totally incredible. I made the final and finished ninth overall. So it was just, it was a dream experience. Yeah, I didn't know about this, but I had some co-workers uh, come up with this. It was originally a stencil with spray paint in someone's garage, I think, and then they eventually upgraded to screen printing. but. They made these t-shirts without my knowledge and um, it was really awesome to come around afterward and see a whole bunch of cheering fans wearing my picture on their shirt. Well, what is the steeplechase? Oh Hi. yeah, so um, the steeplechase is a 3,000 meter track race and what makes it different than any other race is this thing that we're sitting on right here. Um, this is a steeple barrier. It's a hard piece of wood. It's like a hurdle except it doesn't move if you hit it. And um, there are five of them per lap, so 35 barriers in all and one every lap has a water pit after it. There's usually a big cluster of fans right around the water pit, uh, ready to cheer if anything exciting happens. Um, Have you ever it, had an embarrassing moment at the water jump? Uh, no, knock on wood, yeah. I haven't yet. Just stand up next to this. Barriers. The women's barrier is 30 inches high, so right about hip height for me. The men's is about six inches higher, right about here. Yeah, you, um, how did you end up in the steeplechase? Actually, it's a good question. Um, I was a hurdler in high school. Um, I just started doing track after I decided that softball was not for me. I don't really have the uh, muscles <laughs> to be a good softball player. My high school coach let me try the hurdles and I thought it was really fun. So I uh, I have a pretty good form, I would say, in general for a steeplechaser. And uh, When I, I saw Carrie run for the first time, I think that's where I was most impressed is how, how easy it was for you to get over there. Yeah. Barriers, despite the fact that you're not that tall. Yeah, you can lose a lot of momentum if you go awkwardly over, so I think that's where I get my advantage. Yeah. I've done a lot of distance training, so the mixture of that muscle memory, doing hurdles for so long, plus the distance. And you went to school at Princeton yes. University. Mm -hmm. Your best time, I think, was 10.37? Yep. Is mm -hmm. that right? School record at the time. School record. Mm -hmm. From college, if you're 10.37 to 9.53 in uh, 2008, yeah. that's a, almost a 45-second improvement. How did you do that? Yeah, it's one of those events where practice really makes a huge difference. Like we were talking about the efficiency over the barriers and running through the water pit and strategy of when you make your moves so you don't get too tired early on. Um, I think I had a lot of learning still to do. And um, once I finished school, I thought I'd be done with it. Then lo and behold, come out to Nike and anything's possible, right? You can have a track and a steeple barrier that you can use every day at lunch. <laughs> so what's happened over the last I four years? I announced my retirement, I think. You um, did. Did. So um, I got married shortly after the trials. I have two small children at home. Um, I discovered that the desire never really went away. Well, you said husband since then, mm -hmm. two kids. You, yeah. you left out. You have a full-time job. Travel yes. to Asia, I assume. Uh, mm -hmm. I go on average once or twice a year for a week or two to Asia. Um, it's busy, but um, I like it. And how about a good coach? And a good coach. My husband is my coach, so Does <laughs> he's he know the any brightest. Does he know anything about this? Um, yeah, actually, this barrier is custom made for my training. Uh, my husband's brother is a carpenter, so he built this. Have you ever really screwed up? And uh, what did you learn from that experience? This year, I was trying to run the trials A standard in the steeplechase and missed it by 0 0.22, less than a quarter of a second, um, which was a little bit of a screw up on my part in that I should have been watching the clock closer. I should have. Everyone can run a quarter of a second faster, right? Okay. Yeah. If you get into the trials, any, any predictions on your time? Well, my goal is going to be to try and make the final, so it'll be very tactical. Um, I'll be in a heat with 11 or 12 other people and just trying to establish my position, get out. I think you have to be in the top three or four in your race to make the final, so right. it'll be more tactical. Time would be a great bonus, but I won't really be thinking about that as much. What's, what's 
been tough about your training? The balance. It's really hard some days when I've got a lot of work to do to make the time to come out here and train. Um, and then just like feeling exhausted afterward, going back to my desk. As soon as I finish work for the day, I go pick up my kids, we go home, I'm doing the kids' routines, my husband travels a lot, um, getting him to bed and then trying to get a good night's sleep. So I just know there's a lot of elite athletes that have the luxury of 10 hours of sleep and a nap and all they do is run. And um, we're very lucky here at Nike to have the facilities on campus, but um, you can always find the time and it shouldn't feel selfish. It should just feel like something that you're accomplishing that's going to make you better and stronger in the rest of your life. So, Kara, I, I just have to say thank you very much. It's oh, been thanks, great. Steve. It's great to talk to you. Making the trials potentially twice yeah. is a huge accomplishment. You know, my husband has made the trials three times, so I've got a lot to live up to. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> we're talking 2016? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>